Hey there, friends. It's been interesting getting set up here today. Um, I'm trying to get Visual Studio running. <clears throat> and um, it's misbehaving. It's it's one of those days. Um, let, me, let me try this one more time and then we'll kick off the stream here. Thanks for joining me here on... Thursday morning, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Keeping an eye on things. Let's see how it goes. That looks better. All right. <laughs> My system dings are confusing you. Yeah. The fifteen five one. Let's talk about that. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, let's take a peek around here. It looks like we got some folks... Tuning in. Anybody over there on Mixer? Ugh. Ugh. I don't see anybody chatting on Mixer just yet, but I see I see about a dozen folks over here on Twitch. Welcome back to the stream. I've I've started taking to calling this Fritz and Friends. Um, we'll see if that sticks. I think it works pretty nicely. It's a nice alliteration. Um, my name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a, I'm a program manager at Microsoft. This isn't a Microsoft sponsored stream, but we're going to be working with some, some development tools and things that Microsoft creates and, uh, it's all open source. Everything's going to be available for you to download and try and even code along with me if, if you are so inclined. So I'm trying to keep to Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on the stream as my regular schedule. We tried a day yesterday at Wednesday afternoon, Eastern Time, and it worked pretty well. Um, and my friends in marketing actually said, here, why don't you promote with our Twitter accounts? And uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm already seeing a few more people sign in here. Um, looks like I have Niho popping on here on Mixer. Welcome, Niho. Thanks for joining us. Um, so let's uh, let me start my rundown so i published a blog post I, I was writing it last night i didn't quite finish it finished it this morning and i just published it detailing my entire setup so if you want to check out how how i'm doing this whole thing including some pictures of my green screen and how that works uh check out my blog jeffreyfritz.com the latest article that was just posted there literally like 10 minutes ago is uh, all about the software I'm using, some of that configuration. I'll go into more of that software configuration in a future blog post. But some of the hardware I'm using, like my microphone, uh, my camera, um, the machines that I'm running. I mentioned the other day, I actually have five screens going around me here so I can manage what's going on on the stream. And, uh, and the green screen that you can't see behind me because the filter's on. So, um... That's a little bit about what I blogged about in the last day. Of course, I had a wrap up from yesterday. Yesterday, we published the Epic Build Music extension that I've been working on. So that was big for me. I, I'm happy to see that get into the Visual Studio Marketplace. I encourage you to check that out. Links and downloads are over on the blog. Um, what else? What else do we want to talk about before we get started here? I think those are the big items right now. Hats. Got to get to hats. I'm not wearing a hat yet, and I'm I'm not wearing my Beats headphones today. I'm actually wearing uh, ear pods because the the hat I'm going to wear today, Beats headphones don't fit over very well. It actually kind of crushes the hat and ruins the effect. Um, if you've seen some of the webinars that I've run in the past, at one point I did I ran a webinar over Halloween, and to, in order to have a little fun with it. I dressed as a pirate. And that kind of stuck. I, I made all kinds of jokes throughout my webinars from there on about 
Jeff the Pirate. And that kind of became a thing that stuck with me for a while, and I haven't used it in almost, in, in gosh, more than three years. Until today. It's time for the pirate hat. There we are. Pirates today, why not? There you go. So this is <laughs> this is a hat I got from from the parks, from the resort, uh, down in Disney World. Intended to be just like Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a little smushed, it's a little beat up, a little out of shape. But um I, I cosplayed as a pirate one year. We actually had a vacation down at Disney World, down at the Magic Kingdom Resort, and I dressed as Jack Sparrow. I don't quite have the goatee for it, but it was fun. I had a great time, and the, the cheesy little pirate hat that I had that came with my costume, I bought at the costume store here in Pennsylvania, was lame compared to what they had, of course, from Disney. So I got the Disney pirate hat, and it's kind of stuck with me since, and there you go. The pirate hat is back. Yeah, that's right, Andreas. Hope you enjoy it. So, uh, so that's today's hat. That's what we're going to be wearing all stream. Let's uh, let's get over to Visual Studio and let's start taking a look at our code and talking about the project that we're going to work on today. So I'm going to flip scenes, and here we are. Now look at that. Now there really are pirates in Visual Studio. Okay. Um, Oh, gosh, today's song, uh, to the music, I forgot to mention the music. Um, this is Music to Code By from Carl Franklin. Carl has graciously granted me a license to play his Music to Code By. Um, this song is called Red. Um, Red is from his Chapter 2 album. It was published in 2015. You can get it at mtcb.thwop.com. Um, and you can check out his new app, Music to Flow By, available for iOS and Android. Thanks so much for your support, Carl. I really appreciate it. And it makes the makes the background here sound really groovy, you know? I enjoy it. So, um looks like we got about if if my if my gauges here are correct, we got about 26 folks following along here. That's great. Thanks for joining me here today. Um I've got a couple projects that are that are in flux, that are in motion here. Um Let's run over to my GitHub. I don't have GitHub open on my screen right now. Let me grab that. Go to my profile. There we go. Let's move Firefox into the window here. All right. So, um, Epic Build Music, that's the Visual Studio extension that I was working on, that I was tinkering with and making that work. Hey, good morning, Mizzou. Great to see you. Uh, thanks for coming back. Um, so this is published and out there. We'll come back and work on that in an, another week, another time in, in the future here. I want to spend some time with some of these other projects that we've been working on. So Epic Build Music is available right here. Configuration Builders, this was the initial project that I was working on. Um, and the purpose of configuration builders is to give you a way to bring in configuration to your .NET 471 project, right? You have some application configuration you're going to save out there and you're going to use with, um, oh gosh, look at this, this is annoying, that you're going to use, right, you're going to have application developer, configuration developer, you use in your developer, project. Sky Hoshi, developer, developer, developer. thanks so much for following, and, uh, thanks, Steve. Um... So you, you may have third-party third, third configuration information you want to load into your project. Now, that configuration may come from JSON files, may come from environment variables, and we have some configuration builders available for you out there that, that my team at Microsoft wrote, and they're really great for you to use. Um, and these let you use Configuration Manager to work with your settings. DJ Vortex, good afternoon. Thanks for joining. Ah, you're not that late. Don't worry about it. We're still introducing the projects here. Um, and I hope you enjoy the hat. Yes, uh, oh, the pirate talk is only starting. Thank you, Organic IT. Good morning. 
Um, so I wrote configuration builders here based on some feedback. Somebody kind of blasted me a little bit on a blog post saying, I enjoy using any files. So I wrote a configuration builder to allow you to use any files to load up your app settings or connection strings. Now, um, and really I should probably put some of that introduction here in the readme for this. Um, I have a pull request that I received and I want to check that out. Let's triage this before we go forward and, um, and start working with our other projects. I want to make sure I clear out and acknowledge, acknowledge the work that some of you have done to contribute to the stream. And, uh, and, and I, I think I owe that to you for taking some time and helping out here. I, I want to show my appreciation and I, I do, I, I so thankful that you, that, that all of you folks are here checking this out and and taking a look at what we're doing. Um, so let's see, Giancarlo, I have included a web project, followed your suggestions on the getValue method. Uh, this is an RSS feed settings reader. So the idea that I had pitched and I had put out there in an issue was, wouldn't it be great if we could load settings into Configuration Manager from a web server? And RSS is a pretty standard way to publish data. Right, pretty easy to use. So why don't we just set up a simple service and allow you to read that data and put it into either app settings or into database database connection strings. Now it says here that the build check failed checking um, checking Giancarlo's submission here. Um, he says he included a web project, followed my suggestions on the get value method, waiting for feedback. Okay. So let's take a look. He has, we have a conflict in our solution file. Um, I'm not too surprised with that because I've, my, my Git management here has been a little um, sketchy. Uh, let's see. Um, I would like attribution for my contribution of meaningless chat chit chat. Oh, thank you, Organic IT, for your meaningless chit chat. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. What do we got here? Um, so yeah, we, here's our build failure. So I have AppVayor running. Um, AppVayor has a .NET 471 build agent out there that I can use to verify, run all my unit tests and make sure this works. Now AppVayor is reporting to me that it wasn't able to build this non-mergeable pull request. Now that, that feels like something that is my responsibility that I, I have the branch in a state that it's not mergeable. Right, that feels weird. That feels bad. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, how am I going to resolve this? What do I do? Um, use the web editor or command line to resolve conflicts, and that should, right? I want to make sure that this runs properly. So let me click resolve conflicts and see what it gives me. Uh, it gives me the lovely master dev merging nonsense here, and. It, and I, I love the double scroll bar effect here. That's 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 a GitHub thing. That uh, that doesn't look like that's anything that I've done on my browser. Um, but let's see. The, so we have solution items folder here. It looks like it's duplicating, and it's got two different folders, two different um, objects that it's referencing as solution items. Um, and I don't see. So, so this B9 Echo, right? I'm looking for that down lower here, and I don't see that anywhere. So I'm not sure the difference between these two. I mean, it, it looks like it could be okay to just say, you know what, I'm gonna choose and keep the master one. The wife is texting. right um, but the second one here um, so the initial contribution is a samples RSS project and then the oh and, and I'm sorry samples at RSS and samples web and the dev is is nothing there's nothing there so is and actually are we is this pull request requesting to merge into dev or master Oh, it's merging from his master into my dev branch. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into resolve conflicts and I'm going to choose, what, uh, is this just a straight text here? Cool. 
I'm going to choose to keep his contribution for the solution items. And that. And I'm going to choose to keep his RSS and web. I think that should work. So now I'm going to commit the merge. And that should merge back into right this pending stream that we're waiting on here. Okay. I, I thought I just did resolve that conflict. Hmm. Let me refresh, see what's going on here. Okay. Now it's still telling me I need to resolve this. And it's also saying this was verified and I've still got a red X. Hmm. Let's click this one more time and see what's in here. And it's, you know what? It's the same changes. That feels bad. That, right? That feels like I'm, I'm chasing my tail here. What's going on there? Because this, right? This is the change that I just made, right? Simplifying these. Okay. So that's fine. Um, you can open this in GitHub Desktop or View Command Line Instructions. Let's take a look at this in the command line, see what we can do to, to fix this, right? Uh, let's see, check out via command line. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's open my, come here you. Let's open my command line. Let me go to dev. Do I even have configuration developers, builders developers, on this developers, machine? Developers, 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 developers. Julian Pepperoni. Thanks for joining us, Julian. Um, it is here. Good. All right. All right. So let me go into that. Uh, let's see what branch I'm on. I'm on a branch where I was working on, excuse me, YAML features. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to check out my dev branch. Let me do a pull here to make sure I have the latest. Good. Now let me pivot over to my Firefox. Now Firefox says check out Giancarlo Master Dev. Oh, I've got to add. Okay, I've got to add. Mm. All right, I've got to create a new branch and test the changes. Okay. So git checkout, all right, let's do that. Okay. So now I've created a developer, branch called developer, Giancarlo developer, Lily developer, Master Dev. Developer, developer, it's only Gianca, thank you for joining us. I appreciate the follow. Uh, it's only, or is it Gianca? All right, um, and uh, gosh, Gediminus? Gediminus? Thank you for following. I appreciate the follow. Um, I'm now going to pull that master branch in so that I can work on it. Cool. Okay. So now if I go back to Firefox, what's the next thing it says? Merge the changes and update on GitHub. Okay. I'm Giancarlo. Oh, hey. Oh, I didn't realize the uh, the name changed there. Uh, thanks a lot for signing in over there on Mixer, Giancarlo. Let's. Um, I'm just working through getting this merge to work. So now let me open that configuration builders project. Um, feels bad. There we go. Here, Fritz configuration builders. Let's take a look see here. Spooky Coder. Thank you for following. I appreciate the follow. Um, so my solution here looks like it's loading properly, and there's my samples RSS project that Giancarlo contributed. That looks like it's loading properly, and if I build, um, I just did a control shift B. It Oh, unfortunately a process used by Visual Studio has encountered an unrecoverable error. That feels bad. Alright. Fine. Save, close. 
Try this again. Let's see. I, I hope you guys really appreciate the pirate hat today. I have some other off hats, a little bit different than just a ball cap that I'm going to roll out here. There's a, there's a fez. Where's the fez? I've got a fez rolling around here somewhere. Because fezes are cool. I learned that from Doctor Who, right? We'll wear a fez one day. But, uh, yeah, I've got a fedora running around somewhere. We'll, we'll have some fun. Cowboy hats. Oh, yeah. But I hats are my deal. All right, and look at that. The top of my hat's kind of going off the webcam, like disappearing. Um, okay, so this is here. Let me try building again. And it looks like... Come on, build. Looks like a build succeeded. So... I'm okay with where this is. I just don't understand why why GitHub is getting all cranky here about me doing the merge. So let's see here. Merge to the changes and updates. So check out dev, merge, no fast forward. All right, so let's start going through these here. So git check out dev, right? And I'm going to I'm going to do this by hand. Cuz elite developers merge code by hand, right? Wrench it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, so git checkout dev. All right, so I switched over to dev. What's next on my task list here? Um, so merge, no fast forward. So let's do that. And go back over to this. That looks like it ran properly. Okay. Next bit here. And then push origin dev. Okay, let's do that. And looks good, right? Um, go ahead, reload. So there's the RSS configuration builder. And if I run all of my... So we need some unit tests still for that RSS. Um, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll drop some of those in there. But if I look at the sample that uses the RSS, if I look at my app config, so check this out. This is how Giancarlo configured to be able to read that um, in, in RSS feed. So add name RSS, mode equals greedy. Load up all the settings regardless of whether or not they're there. And we're gonna go into the home feed location and we're gonna pull those values and push them into app settings down here. So program CS is just writing out those app settings. Now samples web looks like here's where we're actually outputting the content of it. So home and there's feed and here's the various settings that are configured and built there. That's pretty cool. All right, moving along here. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with these changes. We just need some unit tests to go around them, but that's, that's something we can add before we publish this to the NuGet repository. So there we go, there's my merge. Looks good. All right. Thanks for the contribution. Let's, uh, there we go. I really appreciate it. There we go, and we'll close. Fantastic. Now we've got RSS ability here inside of our configuration builders. You can load configuration from a web service. And that I'm really happy about that. That's that's going to make it a little bit easier to use this type of feature. So I'm not going to merge it into master just yet because I want to get some unit tests around that and we'll build those. Um, let's build those another time. I want to get into some other things here. Command console, command console, command console. Absolutely. Love that console window, right? Um, okay. Moving on. So, moving along here. Let me go... Um, let me go over to the other project, the one that I wanted to work on today. We'll... We'll... Um, let's create an issue, actually. Just... To make sure that we know we, we need some unit tests. Uh, would like to verify RSS before uh, b 
with unit tests before publishing. The uh, integration and samples look great. Um, I also want to make sure um, I, I need to put some documentation with this as well. So uh, need to update docs to include RSS configuration builder. That's pretty easy. So let's, um, I'm gonna create a checklist. You can create checklists in GitHub issues by going hyphen space and then square brackets with the space in between. So um, let's update readme.md. Um, let's also, um, <laughs> oh no, my, my colleague Maria is, is mocking my pirate hat out here. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> it's fun. Okay, um, I, I've got to do my Doctor Who thing one day with the Fez. We'll we'll get to that. We're big fans of the Doctor here at the Fritz House. Um, so I want to update ReadMeMD. Um, I want to include references to the samples. Uh, that's not how you spell references. And let me tell you, I am a huge fan of spell check in the browser. Oh my gosh, I I would I'd look stupid if I couldn't right click and say spell check fix this. Oh. Uh, add include references to the RSS configuration builder samples. Those are really great. And uh, we need to include references to the RSS configuration builder on NuGet, right? So that the NuGet repository knows that we also support RSS and not just any files. So we'll save that. And if, um, you know what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to throw help wanted on this and I'm going to mark these as enhancements because it's really just in enhancements to documentation um, and I'll do the same thing with the unit tests over here um, uh, you folks are welcome to take a look submit a pull request like Giancarlo did real easy to get started and and help out contribute you know I'll thank you here on the stream we'll give you a little bit of credit uh, let's see, Organic IT, will we'll sail to Redmond and make her walk the plank. Well, actually, Marie is not in Redmond. She's in New York City. She's an East Coaster like me, the out-of-towners. We're the, the, um, hmm, we're outside the Redmond reality distortion field. Yeah, that sounds good. So, um, so there you go. Those are configuration builders that you can use. There's NuGet packages available if you'd like to give it a try. Um, and it, it looks like it did run a build and it is passing now showing, I think everything now that's in that dev, um, uh, yep. Six minutes ago it ran and all my unit tests worked properly. I've got the green here, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. If you want to try and download and use what we currently have, um, yeah, look at that. There's the tweets from Maria. Ah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, you know what? I, I made a mistake there. I made a mistake. My bad. Let me go back into this. Um, come on. There we go. Thank you, GitHub. Do I have any releases marked here? Um, I have one marked. Bruno, sorry for joining late. I had a meeting at the same time the stream started. That's okay, Bruno. I, I appreciate you joining. Um, I only have the one here. Let me tag this this change that we got from um, from Giancarlo and I think I'm it, now see look at this I'm already out of sync with my stream with my NuGet package because I think the NuGet package let me open and look over here I want to make sure all the version numbers match right so let me go over um, the NuGet package oh no I'm all, I'm okay that is 020 preview that's the only version that's out there, and a massive 36 downloads. Massive. Um, we'll work on that. Um, I'd like to tag this and, and at least make it available as a nightly so you can check it out. So let me, let me tag this. And uh, if I look at my tags, I have the V02. I'm going to tag this as V03 preview. So that is git tag uh, v0.3.0 preview. And I will push those tags. Arr, matey. 
I'm going to be doing a lot of that. It just feels right with this hat on. And my kids are going to see this video and go, Dad, what are you doing? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Where's where's my release here? There we go. Two releases. So let me put a little bit of notes around this. Just the source will be available. I'm not going to um, create a NuGet package for this just yet. Uh, let's edit this. Where is it? I'd love a big edit button. Right? I'd love an edit button right here, right next to this. Um, Alright, but it's up here. Edit tag. There we go. Release title. Introducing... RSS configuration. Thanks to contributions from... Oh, it's not letting me reference. Okay. Um, we're introducing a an RSS configuration builder to allow you to load configuration from a web server. Give it a try. Let us know what you think. Uh, this is a pre-release. You know what? Maybe I should create the new get package. I feel like I should create the new get package. It'd probably be a good idea. Be a good idea if I created the new get package. I'm gonna create the new get package. Let me do that real quick. It, I, I'm like catching myself here. You know, it's like probably should do this. Um, so release notes. I can actually add on to the release notes here and just go 0 0.3 added RSS right RSS configuration builder okay and let me change this to 0 0.3 looks good I'll save that and I should probably change my version number over here so I'll make this 0 0.3 there you go. Uh, let me build that in release mode. Where'd it go? I just want to build. There it is. Done. Build succeeded. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna use the NuGet package explorer to do my. There it is. To do my bundling of this, just because it's easy to see and and explain. Um, so I'm just going to say open, and I can point to, I don't want to point to my NUP keg, right? NuGet packages have a N-U-P-K-G extension. We call that NUP keg. It works, trust me. Um, so I've already, it's already got the changes that I made, so I'm going to, I don't want to publish. Ex, nah, not export. Save. Failed to generate package due to error. The package does not contain any files. I didn't add the files to it yet. Well, that feels, that feels bad. I need to add, why didn't it? Whatever. Let's add, and this is going to be a, well, we need to create a lib folder for it to live in. And then we need to add a .NET framework version folder. And it, it actually doesn't go up to 471. Um, let's create 463 and I'm going to rename that to net 471 it needs to be .NET 471 because this feature is only available in .NET 471 and now I can say add no not a new file add an existing file and I can point to that release that I wrote out here that one now did we take any other dependencies do I that I need to make sure I include here I don't think so. So we're good on me just working with that. I will file save. There's my NUP keg. And then I'm also going to, yeah, that's good. So now I have that NuGet package sitting here on disk. And now here's where I'm, I've just tripped over myself because I'm using Firefox from, from my, um, from my Surface Book, and this is actually on another machine. This is on my Lenovo Yoga. So I've I've just tripped over myself here because I'm on two different machines. So let me open Firefox on this machine so I can do that upload easily. 
and I'm gonna go right to that let me edit this one more time and let's see where to go here Fritz configuration builders there's my nup keg good um, I forgot the checkbox for this is a pre-release there we go done all right easy I should update nuget.org and include that one. Even though it's a pre-release, I still want to include it up there. Sign in with Microsoft. Yes, please. And I will sign in with my top secret password. Star star. Star star. Um, let's see. Manage packages. And this is... I have multiple NuGet accounts. And this is the wrong one. It logged into the wrong account. Hmm. Hmm. Which account am I logged in with? Sign in using a nuget.org. Yep, use LastPass. Try that one. That's the one I wanted. Ah, there we go. Now, Status Cats, that's a fun package that I created a while ago that has um, status error messages um, available that uh, for your ASP.NET applications. Um, that's kind of fun. So I want to upload a new version of this package. So I should be able to do, right? Upload package. Let me go find it here. Not that one, this one. And it's already got all the information here, including my release notes. Let's line that up so it's nice. I don't have an icon. Uh, nah. Now I could do this all by hand. Uh, I could do this all automatically. And there are some folks that do that nicely. Uh, check the username. Yeah, that's what I made a mistake on. Uh, let's see. Organic IT. The North Atlantic is filled with scurvy sea dogs. Or do the deed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Check the username, did that, all right. I have the same problem with the 0365 accounts. I always pick the wrong one. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Sky Hoshi, why'd you jump from Twitch to Mixer? Eh, no worries. Let's submit and get that uploaded. Submitting, come on. And there we go. So, it's available, there's, there it is. It'll be validating, they're gonna check to make sure there's no viruses or anything in it. So there you go, I now have configuration builders available for you to use. So thanks for the pull request, Giancarlo, it's out there. Um, and we'll, I think we can flip this to production, to, to a released model and merge everything into master um, uh, when we have some of the unit tests there and we update our documentation. And maybe we'll do that on Saturday morning on that stream. Um, all right, I want to go over to the, the new project that we're working on. It's a .NET Core project. And the idea here is we're going to be able to, um, I want to build some code. I want to write some code to help my own stream. And the idea is I want to have a checkbox of here's all the features and things that we're doing on the stream. Excuse me. And I also want to manage some of the, some of the gadgets, some of the widgets that you see around me here because these are all just web browser things check this out let me here you go i'm gonna i'm gonna pull back the curtain here for a second this is what obs looks like this is whoa that's trippy whoa but here you can see all the little gadgets that i've put on the screen and um these are all just web pages and they're embedded as browser inputs so what i'm going to do is i'd like to be able to control that browser output because I know I know ASP.NET Core I can run this in a docker container and it'll be great uh, questions here uh, infinite mirrors yes Microsoft owns Mixer AWS owns Twitch yes that that's some of the ownership stuff and, and I will I, I will be transparent that the bosses did say hey why don't you try Mixer so we're trying Mixer and and 
Actually, today, look at that. You can see, you can see over there, um, we have more folks on Mixer than we do on Twitch today. That's pretty cool. I, I'm not playing any favorites. I think it's great that we're getting folks using both services. Yes, I am using Streamlabs Organic IT. Um, I just published a blog post to my blog, jeffreyfritz.com. You can go there and you can see all the tools that I'm using to produce. Mixer is cool. I'll pass that feedback along. I'm sure the folks will be um, happy to hear that back at HQ. Um, but I'd, I'd like to be able to control and do some of these things that are up here. I mean, let's face it. That, that bar up there for the ASP Netcore workshop goal is pretty easy to build with a little bit of CSS. Um, Mixer has less lag in chat, according to Organic IT. Now, I'd like to point out Organic IT is putting that message into Twitch chat. But I'm not playing any favorites here. <laughs> oh, the irony. Um... Oh, gosh. Let me mention, I, um, I've i been sipping from my .NET Rocks mug, right? You get the little .NET Rocks mug when you um, submit a question to the .NET Rocks podcast and the guys select it and read it during one of the, one of the shows. Um, long time ago, I submitted a question and it was answered on, on a show with uh, Oren Eni. And he was talking to some folks about his product, RavenDB. Um, so, so they've read my they they've read one of my messages. I got the mug. Um, I've been on the tablet show. I've been on .NET Rocks um, on Tuesday next week at four. I think it's four p.m. Eastern time. Um, I'm going to be recording a .NET Rocks episode with the guys. Um, this stream is bound to come up during it. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if they would, if they'd be interested in live streaming the recording. So no, nothing going on on screen, but maybe, maybe I can get our video up and maybe we can make that work. Developers, I'll be, developers, I'll be, developers, I'll reach developers, out and ask about that. Joe Bun 44 thanks so much for following. I appreciate that. Um, see, here's another, so, um, so look for me to do that recording next week. If I am able to, if they do agree to, to allow me to stream it, I'll send out an announcement here, uh, on uh, on Twitter, I'll send it out on the um, on the wall here on both streams so that you guys know. Um, but here's the, that follow right there that we saw. This is a perfect example of of one of the challenges that I have with Streamlabs. That that I don't know if it's a bug, but it's something that that for my stream I want to fix. And I know that it's just a web page that's presenting this, but take a look at the event list over there. We just had Joe Bun follow us, and I think that's over on Mixer because it's not in the list. It, the last one it shows there is Spooky Coder, right? These, I think, are only our Twitch folks. Now, I can come down here into OBS, and I can go to the event list, and I'm going to take a look at that, and I'm going to say, refresh, re refresh the cache of the current page and it's it's only showing spooky coder okay <clears throat> so that last follower didn't show up even though they're over on mixer it's not a true integration even though i've told streamlabs to to merge on their dashboard to merge the two inputs it's not actually merging and putting those two values together so that's one of the things that I'd like to be able to do here with with this project, right? And it's like I said, it's just a web page, right? I mean, it's a uh, crumbs. It's a it's a block with a with your name in it and what you did. You followed. That's easy to do. And if I control it, I can also do some cool things like put put the Twitch logo in there, so I know you followed me on Twitch. I could put the Mixer logo in there, so I know you followed me on Mixer, right? Other other cool things like that. So, uh, bug report. That's not a bad idea. So, let me show you. Let's go over to Streamlabs. So, I'm going to log in over here, right? Here we go. There, this is behind-the-scenes stuff, right? I'm lifting the curtain, right? Breaking fourth wall like, like Deadpool does. Showing you how this all works together. Uh, let's see. Mizu oh, Nightbot's on you now, Mizu. 
uh, stop spamming caps. So Nightbots, it can get a little aggressive. I might peel him back a little bit there. There you go, that's fine. So Nightbot has a couple commands that I configured over there that you can check out. Uh, but yes, Jack Sparrow, I am, I am playing the pirate here this time. Um, so let me show you the um, the event list over here. All right, so here's here's the event list, and there it's showing me what it recently added, and then it's going to show me some test folks that are being added here that they also support. Now, I I, I don't. I don't need your subscriptions. I don't need you pledging or, or cheering or bits or any of that stuff. I, I, you don't need to do that. And in fact, I, I have most of those turned off here. I, but um, should we be expecting some hacking demos coming up? That's what we're going to go be getting into here. Um, so this is very simple, what this is doing. I mean, this is some simple CSS animation. And I'd love to be able to lug, lug? log a bug report. And there is a support bit over here that I can go into. And I can submit a ticket. What kind of user am I? I'm a streamer. My email address, let's key that in. There you go, that's my email address. Um, and this is event list doesn't show integrated events. Um, I would like the event list widget to show uh, events from all sources that I've merged. In my case, uh, Twitch and Mixer. Uh, currently, it only shows one or the other. All right, category, um, let's call it a technical issue. Username, that's me. Streaming site, eh, let's start on that, sure. I am using, this is OBS Studio, operating system. D did you think I'd be using something else? Um, verify, Space Shot is now hosting my stream. Thank you, Chris, I appreciate the host. And submit. But in the meantime, because I know how to write web pages and I know how to tap in and use some of these services, I'm going to see what I can do to start setting that up. So let me just, I'm going to create a quick issue here and then I'll come back to your questions in the chat. So new uh, merged event list. So uh, it would be great if we could um, mimic the event list from Streamlabs and include merged events from all sources. Example, um, follow on Twitch, follow on Mixer. All right, simple. Cool, so that's one of the things that I wanna to get to here. Now let me get to the questions. Um, hacking demos, so we're gonna be doing that. Uh, please explain how to add reference to a .NET Core class library to .NET Framework projects and use .NET Core classes within a .NET Framework project. Okay, um, this is a really good question because there are, and uh, that's A.B. Salahoff, right? Do I have that correct? And you're over on Mixer. Okay, so um, A.B., can I call you A.B.? Um, here's the deal. There are three different types of .NET frameworks right now, okay? And we saw this problem previously when we had um, Silverlight, right? Silverlight was a different .NET framework than when you were creating projects for it, you couldn't, you couldn't reference .NET framework libraries directly. They were a little bit different, okay? Um, let me go over to Visual Studio here and and I can show you a little bit of what's going on here. Um, excuse me. So if I say file new, um, file new project, right? And I look at, I've got all these <coughs> different project types here. Um, web, .NET Core, .NET Standard. That's where we're going with this and I'll come to that. 
other languages, other project types. There's F Sharp. Um, I don't have my Xamarin tools install, uh, installed on this machine. But um, the problem that we ran into was when you would choose one of these, you would start to run into some issues with which li .NET library am I targeting? Which type of project am I creating? Especially when I started creating things in not just Silverlight, but also uh, no Xamarin shame. Yeah, I know, Mizzou. I'll get that. I'll get that installed here. Um, but when I started creating things for Windows Phone, for Silverlight, for Windows Store apps, they were different. It wasn't full .NET framework that you had installed on Windows. And actually, I don't even have those other project types here. I don't. I don't see them. Um, ah, here we go. So, <coughs> the idea the team came up with was this thing called a portable class library. And I know I'm kind of going back in time here. Let's call this a portable class library. And the problem that we ran into was you would have to choose the different frameworks that you wanted to support. And this would find that intersection of... .NET frameworks that were somewhat compatible that you could use. So that felt really bad to be able to support. And we're running into that same issue now with .NET Core and .NET Framework. Two different frameworks, both have a very similar base class library, but they're not quite the same because of course .NET Core works on Mac, Linux, and Windows. .NET Framework ships with Windows and will continue to ship with Windows for at least the next 10 years, because that's how long we support it, 10 years after every release, and we just had a release here in October, .NET Framework 471, shipped with the uh, Windows 10 Fall Creators update. It's like I work on this stuff or something. Anyways, um, so the challenge is, how do we make sure we get this compatibility? And that's where something like .NET Standard comes in. So .NET Standard is a standard set of libraries and contracts that say, if you target and use this API, I'll make it work the same on all the .NET frameworks that support this version of .NET standard. So, uh, .NET Framework 471 supports all of the .NET standard versions up to .NET standard 2.0. Um, and that goes all the way back, I think, to .NET Framework 461. They all support all the versions up to .NET standard 2.0. .NET Core support is, is the base implementation. It's the default implementation of .NET Standard. So every time there's a .NET Standard version, .NET Core will support it. The, the new version of .NET Core will support it. Okay. So your question, how do you add a reference from a .NET Core class library to a .NET Framework project, is to use a little bit of .NET Standard and it will give it the best shot. It'll give it a good try to load it up. Um, Mizzou asks, is it correct to say .NET Core is a subset of .NET Standard? No, no, .NET Standards is actually an API definition. Um, it's, it's, it's a contract, if you will. It's not actually a framework. And that contract is implemented by various versions of the .NET frameworks, including Xamarin. So you have three main .NET frameworks. That's .NET Framework itself, uh, .NET uh, uh, Core, and Xamarin. Now I'm seeing here the question from, from AB is uh, you wanna use Core from .NET Framework. Okay, so we can do that, um, but yeah, I have to go through .NET Standard. Um, and where was that other question here? Uh, Chris is right. .NET Standard is a specification, and .NET Core is is a is a default implementation that works cross-platform of that specification. Um, da, 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 da. Yes, you must implement all APIs. That's correct. What what Space Shot is saying there in the chat. All right. Let's um. So how do you add a reference to a .NET Core library from .NET Framework? That's the question. So let's 
let's take a look. So let me go new project and I'm just gonna put together a sample project just to answer AB's question here and then we'll go back to our, our project real quick. So I'm gonna go Windows Classic Desktop and I'm gonna create a console app here. I'm gonna put it in my dev folder, console app two. That's a very creative name. So we'll create that and there it is. All right. Now, if I wanna create a .NET Core, eh, let's, let's make this actually do something, right? Uh, console.out.writeline, right, hello world. And then let's just do console.readline, just so we know it runs. Now, let me add a core library. So I'm gonna add a new project, .NET Core, class library. Class library one's fine. Uh, Chris is saying, therefore, .NET Core 2.0 implements .NET Standard 2.0. Yes, implements is a good term to use. It It is the default implementation of that interface. Um, I will call this uh, sample text. And let's just create a public static string, get sample text. Let's just call it get. Right, and return, um, hello, AB, what's your name? Salahoff. There you go. All right. Now, if I go back over here to my console, I should be able, right, if I say add reference, it won't let me add a reference to it. And that's because this is in .NET Core, and it's being, and I can't reference .NET Core projects directly. Now, if I remember how to do this correct, what I should be able to do is say add a new project and create a .NET standard project, and I will call this standard lib. Now, it, it works this way because .NET framework is a little bit, mm, is a little bit um, sketchy, but I think you, you need to wrap that reference. So I'm going to add reference and it actually won't let me target the core library. I thought you could do this, add a reference to that core library. What I know what I can do is because core implements the same thing, what I can do is I could say add existing item and I'm gonna actually go up here, go into class library, grab that class, add it as a link and now it'll compile as part of my .NET standard library. So from inside here, I should be able to also say console out right line. And then that is standard lib, uh, no, it wasn't class one. What did we call that file? Uh, sample text. And get. Now it's going to um, why wouldn't it let me add that reference? I want to add that reference. Not there. Add reference and projects. There it is. Now look, check that out. Now it'll let me add a reference to console lib to class lib. Let's do that. I should be able to do that. So here's the thing. .NET Framework 471 now includes in the box everything to run and reference .NET standard libraries. Now, why am I getting a thing there? Let's give it a shot and see what happens. So I'm gonna go class library one, uh, sample text, get. Okay. Um, that looks like it's referencing properly. If I build this, it builds properly. It, at least it looked like it did. What's in my error list? Project targets .NET Core 2 cannot be referenced by a project that targets 471. Right, okay. So, and it's because of that framework mismatch. So if you're creating class libraries that you want to share between the two, you need to create them as .NET standard libraries. And that's what's going on here. You can't, reference it. It shouldn't allow, uh, it should not have allowed me to add that reference. So let me add a reference to my .NET standard library. And you see, I get everything coming through properly. And 
See, now why is class library one lighting up for me here? Ah, because it's in the namespace of this. Right, good. So that should work. And now if I start this, debug, start new instance, and I get both messages. So my answer to you is don't create .NET Core class libraries. I think .NET Core class libraries is a bad practice right now and that you should create .NET standard class libraries so that they are able to be referenced and used across not just .NET Core, but .NET Framework and Xamarin. Unless you need to only build something for .NET Core and only .NET Core, and we're in this this mixed state right now where folks are gonna to need to support stuff on multiple frameworks. If you're in that mixed state, and most of us are, create .NET standard libraries. And because the .NET Core content is the same as .NET standard, go ahead and bring those directly into your .NET standard library. So Chris writes, yes, Jeff, the way .NET 461 implements .NET standard is confusing. I don't think people know the difference between that and what I just said about 471 having it in the box. Um, so before I get to the other questions, when I say it's in the box, you don't have to include a reference to the .NET standard libraries here. The .NET standard reference implementation has been delivered, not reference, the .NET standard contracts have been delivered as part of .NET Framework 471. If I remove that reference, and if I come up here and I want to change to address the question here, um, does this work for 462? If I choose, I don't have 462 installed, I'll choose 461, it's about the same. So I'm doing 461, good, save everything. So now I have this .NET standard library here, and you can see this is .NET standard 2.0. I can't, if I, if I just add a reference to that, it added the reference and didn't, it didn't make me add the .NET standard implementation. Um, that's interesting. There's a, there is a .NET standard um, package out there that you used to have to install. I've, the tooling might have been updated here so that it handles it. But there's, and it does still work. Um, there, there was a package, a NuGet package you had to install in order to get the .NET standard library available for you and be able to reference them from the other frameworks. Um, rebuild, Mizzou is saying. All right, sure, let's do a rebuild. Not a problem. So there's my rebuild, and it it still works. So I am referencing and using that across different versions. Uh, do you know of a way to simply identify what a project type is? The Solution Explorer doesn't lend itself to IDing what's what type. So. I'm, I'm assuming, uh, Skyhoshi, your question is, um, what framework type is being targeted? You're right, you're gonna have to go in and actually either do a properties and take a look at that target framework. Um, you can also embed, right, you can view the properties window here, right? Where's properties window? Right, and when I click on these, it doesn't show you. That might be a nice piece of feedback for my friends on the .NET team that the properties window for the project, it'd be nice if it showed me the target framework that we're using developers, in each one of these. Oh, thanks for the follow, uh, AB. Uh, I appreciate it, and and thank you, Steve. Yes, we're talking to developers today. Um, that guy gets so loud. <laughs> Good thing he's off managing the clippers. Target framework and project type. I think that's a good piece of feedback for the team. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what, let, let me show you how it, and where the team is monitoring that type of feedback here. I'm actually gonna click on the send feedback button up here and I'm gonna provide a suggestion. Now this goes to Visual Studio user advice. Now you can key stuff in here and actually the team isn't, is looking at user voice, but they're not looking at it quite like they were. I'm going to click this again, and I'm going to say report a problem. Just because I know this bubbles up, and I know the folks 
back at Visual Studio Command Center. Yeah, that's a thing. They they see this stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't want to do that. Your sign in info is expired. Fine, I will re-enter my credentials. Yes, this account. I actually got a message this morning that somebody was trying to hack into my Microsoft account. I hope it was none of you viewers. Uh, DJ Vortex, just show the target framework as a new icon next to each project. Yeah, but you know what? We're gonna get into we're gonna get into a little bit of uh, icon overload there. Um, and and they did. You're right. They did try that, and it, it started to feel a little weird. Um. So close. Oh, they closed my entry of recent projects as a duplicate. Fine. Let's report a new one here. And um, so what I'm going to say here is um, difficult to identify the target framework and project type. Uh, it would be great to see the target framework and project type in the properties window when I click on various projects in uh, Solution Explorer. Uh, that's good. I don't think I need a screenshot. I could provide a screenshot. I don't need to include a screenshot. Um, next. Looks good. And there we go. That's how easy it is to submit some feedback, to, to send any comments or questions you have to the Visual Studio team. And now this will appear in my list of uh, problems, suggestions that I've sent in. Um, it's not reloading. I can't right-click and reload. I guess they received it even though it's not showing here. So, uh, let's see, Mizzou. Um, one, one very annoying thing with the newest way of how NuGet references are referenced is if NuGet A depends on B, only A is displayed. V uh, Visual Studio does not display a flat reference anymore. Ah, you're right, Mizzou. And this was, this is a very good point. Let me show you, interdependencies, there's SDK and here's the things in the SDK. Let me go over to the project that we're going to be working on here, and I can show you and talk a little bit closer, um, speak a little a little bit closer to what it is that you're describing, and that's in our rundown project. It takes about 10 minutes to show up anyway. Even if you closed it now and reopened it, it'll take some time. So let me show you. Inside dependencies, we have... Uh, doc that. Get back here. There it is. All right. And, and look. Come on now. Come on now. Whatever. Um, under dependencies now, I have three different branches of dependencies. Analyzers, those are Roslyn analyzers that review my code and tell me um, all kinds of little helpful things. Uh, the SDK, right? That's my .NET Core SDK that I'm using. And then NuGet. These are packages that are being referenced. Let me open this up so we can see it a little. Open this up so that it feels bad. Come here. There, now we can see it. Ha! Ah! I'll get you. Um, so now here's it, you're right, Mizzou. It shows you. It show it shows you initially just the top level references, and those top level references, as as Mizzou is is pointing out, are just the ones that are listed here, inside our packet inside of our project file. This is the new way that we're referencing and using NuGet packages inside of .NET Core projects. Now, only these top two are references, and they have what are called transitive dependencies. These are dependencies on other projects and other packages that are hidden, and Visual Studio is loading for you. And you can see them when you open this up. And these are all the things that this ASP.NET Core All project are referencing. And by default, we hide these for you. We, we don't think you need to reference and see all of these every time. Especially if you're not working in Visual Studio with a .NET Core project and you have to go through and hand edit and key in each one of these things, right? If you, our previous version you had of .NET Core, you had to list every single one of these dependencies. And that felt really, really bad to maintain because you also had to maintain the lineup of those things so that version two 
worked with those version 2 packages. Um, it feels like this is an issue in discoverability and awareness. You know what? Um, I understand your concern, but let me finish explaining here so that the rest of the crew is up to speed on this. Um, so these are all compatible versions that do work with each other, and you can open these up and drill down all the way and see everything that is being referenced by all of these things, okay? Now, Mizzou is suggesting that's not being transparent. You're hiding these details from me. Yes, we are hiding those details by giving you the convenience of using the all meta package, this package that references and shows all these things. However, if you do want full control over all of these packages, if you want to take this hosting abstractions, and I'm just picking this out, and choose a different version of this, maybe you have your own implementation of it you want to use, you can pin that version inside your csproj file, and we'll use that version instead of the one that is being transitively included here. So yes, we, we are hiding some of those things, but we're hiding them as a convenience because we, we understand that most folks want to use the defaults, the things that line up. Doesn't this feel like an NPM dependency hell? That's why we're trying to simplify this and make these things that all line up and work with each other just happen and are available for you. <clears throat> and in fact, when you look at the base class library, so let's take a look at that for a second. Uh, where is it? Net framework, right? Um, where is it? Microsoft.net, there it is. And you look at some of these in here, right? Here's all the DLLs. And these are delivered with Windows. So for .NET Core, we have the same level of granularity and we need to deliver these to some of those other platforms that that aren't controlled by Microsoft so it's you, it, this is completely a choice for you do you want to manage each of the individual packages you're more than welcome to do that nothing is preventing you from doing that um, it's what yarn solved and the latest version of NPM th I think adapted to yep so we can package these up and when you install a .NET Core shared framework on other platforms, versions of these are installed and available for you. It's about choice and I, I completely understand what you're asking for Mizzou. You'd like to have a little bit more control over it. You're more than welcome to do that. But we understand from the feedback talking to customers and developers, it, because we started ASP.NET and .NET Core with the full reference every one of these packages at the lowest grain, um, we understood that they were getting frustrated with maintaining the lineup of those packages. So to ensure that we had a consistent lineup, we give you the all meta package so that you can easily see and reference everything together. Now, the other thing that we've done is during the build process, and particularly during the publish, we don't include all of the packages if they're not being used when you publish. So things like, uh, let me go down here and show Entity Framework Core, I'm not using in this project right now, so it won't be included when I do a publish. That makes sense. So it kind of simplifies things, and, and you may have seen my colleague Scott Hanselman on his blog, we're actually doing some things to, to eliminate DLLs and parts of DLLs with a, with a linker in .NET Core that'll make your build even smaller, excuse me. So great things happening there that our compiler team, our SDK team, our CLI team are working on. So thanks for the question. Real good question there. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I could take a few seconds and explain that to, to the folks and everybody here on stream. Now I've, I've, I've done something bad here and I've got, I've got everything that was in, ah, uh, all right, come here. I want to get you back in. No, it won't let me put it in that window. All right, goodbye. And goodbye to that one. Since I docked my Solution Explorer, <clears throat> it uh, it feels like it should be over here as a... So I want to... There it is, dock. Ah, there, we're back. 
All right. So that's the NuGet tab here. Mizzou, just one more thing. The main issue is not with .NET Framework. It's more with third party. If third party A depends on third party B in turn and so on and so on. You're right. You're right. Third party folks will potentially hide other libraries. And that could be a concern. And, and you're welcome to expand and manage those dependencies. Um, they're doing their best to ensure that you have a very clear reference and definition of those compatible libraries. And you're more than welcome to pin those versions if that's what you would like. So, um, all right, let me get into this. <clears throat> so, because I'd, I'd like to write some code today. We've got about 40 minutes left. Um, so I, um, I don't know too much about the Twitch APIs yet. And where we left off, um, I've got this very simple checklist, right? That, that allows me to see and, and review what's in my rundown. What are the things I'm going to cover? And this runs um, with my Kestrel, my, my Kestrel web server. And I get a very simple checklist here. Um, Brainless Iowa. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Um, all right. So uh, here's my simple list. And if I go over, let me copy this, open another. And if I go to my admin page, right, these are real checkboxes that I can check. And if I look over here and refresh, they check appropriately. But I have to refresh. I don't want to have to do that refresh every time. Now, I could do that with SignalR. And SignalR for ASP.NET Core is in a very early preview. I don't want to wire that up just yet. In fact, I'd like to, as we get to an initial preview... I'd like to bring on somebody from the SignalR team and help help adapt and write that code here. But for right now, just to make sure that my index page shows the latest updates for that, <clears throat> I'm going to um, I'm going to write a little bit of JavaScript here using jQuery, just to refresh that that list of content there. So let me go back over. Um, I'm going to grab my reference to jQuery. And sure, I'll start that block there. And I'm going to paste that right at the bottom of my page. Right at the bottom. There it is. Um, and you'll see I use the... Yes, I use the uh, comments here so that HTML doesn't try and parse this. I'm, I'm funny like that. All right. So there's nothing wrong with this, right? That's HTML comment. And that's an end JavaScript comment hiding this block from the HTML parser. You don't really need to do that nowadays, but it's an old habit that I've had that I'm going to continue with because I like it. And it's my code. So, um, actually, I'm, it's open source, so whatever. All right, so I want to ping that change. Um, hey, Glenn. And why did Glenn turn into a frog on... That, that should be Glenn, as as Calum, uh 3 is out there. Um, is that Glenn Condren jumping on there? Thanks for joining us. So I'm to, to make this simple and, and really be able to read and load my, my data just when it changes. Um, hey, all right, so welcome, Glenn. That's a member of our ASP.NET team. You might uh, recognize him from some presentations. Um, Glenn Condren... Um, and actually, we're going to get to some Docker stuff in a minute, so uh, you might be able to provide some insight for us here. Um, so I just want to run out and hit my rundown item controller and get my list of items. You know what? Let's just repaint it on the screen every three seconds. And actually, repainting feels like a little much. Hmm. I want to I want to update the checked state of those boxes as the checks happen. Now I could do just a, a timer and load it every couple seconds. Uh, welcome. Yes, Bruno. Thank you for welcoming. So let's see. Um, I, I could just do that. And then if something new is checked, I could just set the appropriate checked state on it. And I have the IDs. So my my controller here that has a get method that's just going to return this list, I could use that to bring back and, and paint this. 
Um, and Glenn, just to, just to update you, what I'm doing here is we're writing a simple web page, just a checklist, simple to-do list, that also has an admin side. And what I'm going to do is I'll eventually embed this into the video here using OBS so that everybody can see here's what's going on on the stream. Here's what's coming up. Uh, Jobon44, I use SignalR Alpha 2 with Message Pack Protocol in a project I'm working on. Works great. Only thing missing is auto reconnect. And it's it's those reasons I don't I don't want to get in and promote some of the nightlies for SignalR or .NET Core just yet. I want to wait and I want to let the team get to a, a stable preview that they're they're ready to share and start working with before I start taking a look at that. But but you're right, Jovan. You're more than welcome to go out there and and take a look at the at the nightlies. So this is a very simple user interface, and then we'll start adding in some of these other user interfaces for some of the widgets that we're going to embed on the screen. But we'll be able to run this from a Docker container and be able to publish and work with this without it taking up time and, and space on my machine. Right? I want to keep my my footprint from my ASP.NET Core application that's publishing these things, uh, this content very small so that it's not interfering with OBS and, and the stream. And then eventually, if I have this set up right, we should be able to publish the image and let other streamers be able to use these tools to make their stream better. So I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I feel like this stuff should be easy for folks to get and use. And Streamlabs does a great job, but like I said, I'm a web guy, I know how to write code. Let me see what I can do. All right, so let me let me set up a a uh, an interval to come back to to ping that to ping that service, get my list of content, and and just repaint whether it's checked or not on screen. Um, so let's see, what do I do to do a? It's a what is it? Window dot right set interval, and then I could specify how. Uh, well, I specify my function and then a timeout. So let me set up my callback function, okay? And let me come over here, and I'll have that ping, let's say every five seconds, right? It's just me that's connecting to this. I don't need to worry about um, overloading the server, right? It's only going to be my one page, and it's hosted and running locally on my machine. So, so real, this is really old school brute force, the way that I'm going to do this. So I can do a, Right, I can do a dot, is it Ajax? I want to do a dot Ajax, and right, I can specify my settings for that, and I hope you I hope you love the pirate hat today. That's today's hat. I'm, I'm guessing there's some folks back at, at Building 18 that are enjoying how things are going here. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm, I need to specify all the different things, my configuration to go and fetch that data. Now I'm gonna cheat and go over here. So I'm going to specify, I don't have any data, but I'm gonna have a callback method that I'm gonna call, right? So I don't need to specify some of these things. Um, I think I can get away with just the URL to go get. So let's do that. So I will just say URL and then I'll specify, I'm going to, um, I went to API items and I wanna get all of them. So to get all, from this, not repository, from this controller is um, this get method. And the get just goes to, well, the same as my route. This is the default route that it generated. It's actually gonna be API items. So I will do a get to that location. And then I believe, yeah, there we go. So um, I thought there was a success here. Is there a success? No. Uh, then that's what I want to do, right? Oh, look at that. That's an autocomplete. I need to move my head there. Thank you. You're right. Need to give a little bit more space there for my code, but look at, look at that autocomplete. That's beautiful. All right. Um, let's see. I want to, I forget how to do the then, the promise way to do this, because it's been a long time since I've written JavaScript like this. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the docs. <clears throat> uh, what is it? API jQuery.com. And I'm just doing a jQuery get. I just want to load up that data, right? So I'm going to do a, um, not Ajax start. 
I just want to do a get. Isn't there a dot get even? Use the await in JS. Oh, I could do that as well. That's a new feature in J in JavaScript. You know what? Uh, not dot get re returns DOM elements. Nope. I'm going to want right jQuery jQuery Ajax. Right and where is it? Then is what I want to wire up to this, right? So I'm using that promise model. Um, it does a done. And let's do done. That works. Have a nice day, dev coaches. Wish you could stay longer. Cool. Well, thanks for joining me today. Um, so I'm going to use that format right there. So the data coming back. So let's just see what it returns. And you know what? I'm only going to do that once. So let me just push this out really far so I can see what it's doing. Look at that, you could see everything got reloaded because Browser Link, the tool inside Visual Studio, reloaded my browser here for me. So let's take a look at what's going on. On my console, I'll refresh the page. And it didn't actually query it. Why didn't it query it? Right? Or is it waiting for that huge number of requests to finish? Let's make it 5,000. So it reloaded. Where's my data? There it goes. Object, object, object dropped. Uh, that's, that feels wonderful. Look at that. There's my object array in each one of these. Cool. So it's a, it's the data that I fetched, right? I can actually use, uh, navigate through these JSON objects directly in jQuery. And you can see here my sample it's loading pretty well for me. So that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, so now I want to check to make sure to see if the checked state is different for these items based on what's coming back. So let me just do a, right? So that data is in, it's right. It's an array that's coming back. Hmm, right? So we can do a four on that array. Was it, isn't there a four each in JavaScript? No, I could do a four var, uh, let's call it item. And can I do that in data? No, give me that back. Four var item in data. Right now, item is an object and it thinks it's a string. All right, let's see what we can get here. So funny to hear you say object, object, channeling my inner state. Ha <laughs> ha! No. <laughs> no. So the item has an ID. It has, right, if I look over here, there's, it has an ID with lowercase, and it has text. So I can check the ID of it, and if is completed, then I can, right, so, all right, all right, here we go. Um, I can go... Uh, get right window get uh, come on I thought there was get element by ID right can I do that I thought I could do that haha <laughs> yes I can all right so I can say item dot ID so now I've got the li and now I want to um, <laughs> I want to check the span inside of it you know what, it'd be great if I could just reference that span directly and not have to check any of it. So I'm gonna update my markup here. Let's call this item, <clears throat> item dot ID. So now I can say window get element, uh, I could say this item equals window get element by ID. And I can say this is item underscore, and I should now have this element. So now, Right, this item, it's actually an element, right? So I can say this item dot, can I say has class? Um, and I wanna do it, okay, so I want to change the class if, if it's now checked and it was unchecked. 
So let's say, um, no, you know what? Let's just set the class directly, no matter what, right? Uh, ah, look at that, DJ Vortex with a little bit of jQuery. Oh man, look at this. It's like a race to see who can who can give me some good code for this first. I, I like the has class. All right, let's do that. Right, so the has class, right? So if I do this and I say this item dot has class and has class returns a Boolean. So I can say uh, lif icon, oh, gotta include it, um, unchecked, um, right? And uh, I need to do my uh, my boolean check here, and um, item, and it was is completed is the name of that property. So it's currently unchecked, but it is completed. I want to remove that existing class there. Uh oh, what's this one? Um, I need to do it in if on that. There we go. Then I want to I want to remove that other class. Isn't there? Isn't there a toggle? This item dot right toggle class. Yeah, look at that. Add or remove one or more of the classes. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So I want to toggle glyph icon unchecked. A boolean indicating whether the class should be added or removed. That feels like it should just be removed. I should just say remove class then. There we go. And then I can say this item. Oops. Add class. Right, glyph icon. Check. Right? And then I should be able to do the reverse also here. So if it gets unchecked when it was checked. So let's do that. So, and not completed. Then we're just going to reverse these. There we go. That feels easy. Let's go over to here. So let's see, this should be running here inside of, it's not doing anything. It's not showing me anything inside of Edge. Edge doesn't love me. Not like Firefox does. Ah, it's not there either. Why isn't my set interval starting? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. What's it doing here? Is it actually making those calls? Well, it made one call. There it goes. But it's not outputting it to my console. Is the loop valid? Never use for in JS. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Right, four of our item in data, right? Ah, I removed the, lo the log, you're right. Let me flip back. You used the, ah, okay, so in the past you folks have used the jQuery for each. Okay, so so there's that. Now let me grab this one and I I can pull that off. And So here's my admin version of it. So let me check today's hat and it should check over here when this reloads the next time. And it's not reloading, why isn't it reloading? 
I've angered it. All right. So let's look at the network tab. I'm going to go down here to the last one. And I can look at the body of the response. Now, I should be able to find... There's today's hat. Is completed. True. For in iterates only over innumerable properties in an object. Did I set an interval or a time? Oh, no. It's going. It's going. So I'm doing for var item in because data is a an array. So it should be doing that iteration over the array. So, right? Console log uh, inspecting item Right, and let me get rid of that one. And let's take a look at our console, and we should see it inspecting as it comes through. Now, this time it reloaded and saw the hat. Ah, look at that, undefined. And it's actually only hitting it once. Go to the debugger tab and drop a breakpoint. I think that's a fine idea. Let's take a look-see. Um, not in, I don't want to be in storage. I want to be in my JavaScript. So let's drop a breakpoint. That's not the right content. <clears throat> so we found an issue with Edge. All right, so this is 59201, so that's right here. So I should be able to drop a breakpoint right there. So now data is an object is hmm is an array with 14 objects in it. So if I step in right so here's one of my items and it's a, it's just a zero. I need to reference the item with uh -huh, hmm, it didn't I see the problem. I see the problem. So that for in is more or less giving me an indexer to it. So let me call this uh, for count. And now I can say var uh, item equals data count. And now, yeah, yeah resume. Go. Now, if I go over to the console, var item of data. Object doesn't support get elements by ID. All right, we'll come back to that. Uh, so the suggestion is change this to an of. And let's make this item. Yeah, I saved, right? Yep, saved. So we should see this object doesn't support get element by ID. I thought we could do window get element by ID. I thought that was a thing. Isn't it a thing? Wah. Fine. Have it your way. I will jQuery that. Gotta drop out. DJ Vortex. Thanks, Jeff. We'll catch up later. Yeah. Oh, it's document got. Thank you. My bad. Document get element by ID. There it is. Thank you. My bad with the wrong reference. Thanks, Skyhoshi. This is where I use map. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. So this is loading, and we should see in the console when it starts inspecting these, right? Because, oh, I removed the console. That's fine. Let me bring up my admin one, and I should be able now to check music to code by, and we should see it check over there, and there it goes. All right, and housekeeping, there it goes. All right, so where I want to go, <clears throat> so I can, I can certainly start embedding this in the stream, but I also want to roll off the top, right? Everything that is that has already been, right, I'd like to get some CSS animation in here, and I think that's something that I'm going to save for next time. But I'd, I'd like to start rolling some of these things off the top. 
So let me let me just do a little cleanup here for the end of the day. I'm gonna go back up and let me go into Fritz rundown. Oh, wait a sec. Hang on. This works just fine for what we're doing right now. I had already put stuff together to make this a Docker container. Let me run this as a Docker container. Set this as the startup project. And now I want to make sure that this runs just fine inside Docker. You see I have Docker in, you can't see. It's installed and running in the background and this is a Linux Docker container that I have here. If we take a look at the output, you'll see it's actually building my ASP.NET Core project with a Docker container that's designed to build ASP.NET Core projects. And then it's gonna publish into another container and be able to run there. Volume sharing is not enabled. Enable volume sharing. Oh, I thought I had that. Let me open up my Docker settings. Shared drives, it's shared. Images in VHD location. Um, that looks fine. What changed? That message is so much better than it used to be. It is. It is so much better. But that C drive is shared. Um. Ah, you know what? I changed, I changed my password is what happened. Good. Try this one more time. And then I'll have it running inside a... Now I've done it. <coughs> right, apply and it should just work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do a rebuild. Force this to run again. The little command at the bottom of the window tests it out for you. So it's rebuilt. Looks like it, it looks like it succeeded. So I will try to run it now. There we go. Now we're running in it. And now this is coming out of a container. So now I can publish this container and run it over on my other machine that will be hosting and running it and I can embed this inside the video. Now we'll get into some other special effects next time so that we can make the font a little bit nicer and like I said, I can start to roll some of these things off the bottom. And I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put it here on screen. There's a lot already going on here. But I, I like the portability of this container because I want, I, I want to host all my little widgets here individually, right, and independently. Because, like I said, I'm a web developer. I think I can I can do an okay job at managing these. Uh, AB asks, uh, if there are sp uh, spare time left, can you explain what role Bauer Yarn NPM plays in .NET Core projects? Sure. Um, briefly, NPM, Bauer, Yarn, um, those are um, those are package managers for for JavaScript and static content libraries. And you can use those in, uh, in coordination with your ASP.NET Core project to bring in content from those very common resources that a lot of folks who use Node.js and Bower and Yarn, they prefer to use those. And you can couple that with your ASP.NET Core project. So this gives you the opportunity to, to use some of those tools that you might like and enjoy and wire them up to your ASP.NET Core project. You're more than welcome to go out and download jQuery directly. And in fact, we packaged that for you and put it here in the lib folder, as well as the Bootstrap CSS library. We make that available for you inside the lib folder of the default template. You're welcome to go and use these other tools and we provide tooling to enable you to use those libraries if you wanna use those package managers to bring in those features. In particular, you need to use NPM or Yarn if you wanna bring in Angular because Angular, um, they, they publish updates to their stuff very, very quickly and it comes out on NPM only. It doesn't get published over to Bower. And Yarn is just another flavor of NPM that was written by Facebook that accesses and references the NPM, the Node Package Manager projects, just a little bit differently. 
but mostly the same. Um, it can crash if the same CSS is referenced twice. No, it cannot crash. It, you can't really crash. Um, it, and it's an issue with IE11. You shouldn't be using IE11. Let's start there. You should be using Edge. Um, if you're if you're dedicated to the Windows browsers, you should be using Edge. A lot of I, I've seen a number of services, including Twitch and Mixer. The way to get the best experience with those two services is actually to use Chrome, is what those services recommend. Of course, my colleagues would prefer if you used Edge. Um, just joined. Nice hat. Thanks, Check Digits. I decided to go back to the Telerik Pirate look. Um, but you actually caught me here right as I'm wrapping up today. IE11 still has a big user base. You're right. And if it does have a, a problem with that CSS, uh, yeah, Glenn's saying he's not, it's, he's not concerned what browser you use. <laughs> I can't tell my boss not to use IE11. Okay. Um, I, I'm not on the Internet Explorer team. All I can tell you is um, they, they would prefer you, that you use Edge. If the, you're having those problems with IE11, there are ways to report issues to them, and it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like there's a way to push back. Uh, push back and report those problems. They disabled Edge at a job I know of, and I can't say, wow, they disabled Edge. That's interesting. Okay. That's like, remember back in the day, and I know at some places they, but they put super glue in USB ports on some machines. Just so you can't plug in a USB drive. That's kind of crazy. All right, let me, um, let's clean up here. So I am going to commit my changes here. Um, let's take a look at my status. All I did was work on that CSHTML, working on a little bit of JavaScript. So let's um, commit that AM, not dash A, dash M. There we go. I got that tip yesterday. Make that one switch. Um, now refreshing every five seconds. That was easy. Let's push those changes. This will go up into my dev branch. And now I have that Docker developer, image sitting developer, here. Shady developer, Stream, thanks so much for the follow. Um, you're catching me right at the end of my stream here today, but I hope you uh, I hope you join us on Saturday is when I'll be streaming again. And of course, the full recording will be available on YouTube in just a little bit. Nice hat, thanks, Inside. <laughs> uh, we chose pirates today. Why not? Um, so if you look at my Docker images, I do have that image here called Fritz Rundown. It's my dev tag because that's that's the tag that I that it builds with inside Visual Studio. And um, yeah, I can use this now to, I, I can publish this if I wanted to out to the Docker Hub. I'm not gonna do that yet because it's not quite where I want it, but I could publish this to like a private repository on Azure. And then because I would be logged into my private repository and only I know how to get to it, I can reuse and push that Docker container image to other locations like, like my broadcast machine down here. Um, I'm going to save that for another time. I know Glenn's here, and, and Glenn and I have talked about possibly doing, doing a little bit of pair programming and working together here on the stream. Um, it, Glenn, are you still out there? Dro drop me a line here in the chat room if you're still out there. I'm okay with trying to run a test here. Let's see if, we can get, if I can get Glenn's video working here live on stream. Let me, I'm going to dial up Skype. Not that Skype. That's a wrong Skype. Bad Skype. Skype on this machine down here. Um, um, I'd like to use developer, Skype for regular developer, people. Developer, Skype for, developer, not Skype for business, developer. but normal public Skype. Yeah. The, uh, I'm going to open up Skype here. Um, go grab a new machine since I am home. One with a webcam. <laughs> um, and then, uh, here we go. I gotta log in again because I changed my password. So this is the desktop version of Skype, not the Windows Store version. So the Windows Store version is a little bit harder to work with with OBS, and I've been wanting to to give this another shot doing the doing the interview here. So um, so I'm using yeah I'm using the desktop version. And, um, yeah, 
I'm not going to show you my, my call window here, but uh, once I get once I get Glenn online there, um, we'll try and dial this in and see if I can get him to appear on stream here with us, because um, I have a slightly different setup for this, and if it works right, I think next week we can start doing some interviews. And, and that's, that's really where I want to get to, right? I want to bring on some of our friends that are experts in some of these things. I'm all thumbs when it comes to JavaScript, right? You're seeing that, um, but I can, I can, I know where to go to find the answers that I need, right? And fortunately, I've got you folks here in the chat room that can help pair program with me and we can, we can get stuff done. Um, but what I'd like to what I'd like to do is right get some of these folks on. Let's let's pair program together. Let's triage your open source projects. And of course, I, I've set some of those follower goals out there. Right, if we get to 500 followers on Twitch, we'll do an ASP.NET Core workshop. I'd love to be able to bring in some of the team and have them contribute during that if they're available and they're interested. And I've also I I also have a goal out there of a thousand uh, followers. And if we hit a thousand, um, I'll open up and and we can pair program with you together and we'll bring in different folks, sign up for time slots and we'll work together on your projects here live on stream. I'm assuming folks will be interested in stuff like that. Um, so Glenn's going and grabbing a machine with a webcam here. I'll give him a few seconds to grab that. And actually if I'm not sure, I'm just looking at my email here real quick. They received my my help request on Streamlabs about my event list. So who was that? Sweaty Omar is now following us on on uh, on Twitch. Thanks, thanks Omar. Or is it Sweaty? I think I'll just call you Omar if that's okay. But thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Ta -ta -ta. Yeah, let's see if we can get if we can get this video call to work. Now, the way people tell me to work a a video call here on on stream if, is turn off my webcam, right? So so turn off my webcam in OBS, but turn it on in Skype so that the folks that are calling me can can see me, and then. What you do is you add what's called a window source in OBS, right? You're going to capture a specific window and you, you trim that window appropriately so that it captures various pieces of the window and that's what we're going to embed in the stream. Now, my thought here is because I'm now running Visual Studio and my dev tools on this machine over here, and if you saw my blog post earlier today, you'll, you'll see my comments I did not want to use Skype for business. That's correct, Glenn. Um, you'll see my comments where I'm now using a... I have my Lenovo Yoga over here that I'm remoting into. And actually, you can't see it because of the um, the bar up at the top. But I can I can bring down my, my tab up here. And um, it, it's a reference to my other machine. But fortunately, it's hidden back there. So it maintains that mystery of I'm actually on two machines. So um, let me let me see. So <coughs> you can find me on on Skype. Um, <laughs> let me see. How can I get how can I get Glenn my Skype without publishing it right out there for everybody to see? Um, gosh. Let me. Hmm. Do you have my Skype? Email. Yeah, right? Uh, let me see. I'm going to open Twitch messages. Second screen email. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my second screen to write a quick email here to Glenn. There we go. New email. And Skype ID is this. Skype ID is there we go 
All right, now I'm gonna close Outlook because Outlook eats processors for breakfast. Yeah, outside of work Skype, absolutely. Carrier pigeon, that's a great idea. Is there, oh wait, you're right, I can do Twitch messages over here, can't I? Let me, I forgot I had that. Let me do a whisper. Um, so here's my Skype ID. There you go, it's in Twitch whisper for you. Xbox live message, way to go there, thanks. Right. Let's see if Let's see if we can make this work real quick. Okay, now I'm confused. Are you still doing a bit or were you serious? Am I doing a bit? What a bit. Yeah, we're gonna do just a little bit trying to get this we're gonna try and get the the connection to work here. <coughs> try and get the, the interview hook up just to work, just to say hello and see if we can make that work because I think I have this configuration working properly now. I'm not gonna, I don't think we're gonna write too much more code here. Um, but for next time, so what I've, wh what I've started doing, just to keep track of what we're working on, I've, um, I've created a repository here. There we go, called Livestream. And I've started putting some questions and some feedback from folks in here. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I've started putting some issues, some things here. Um, I, I still want to show an ASP.NET Core controller that uses both API and MVC. Um, but I want to make sure that I come back and I want to um, start the CSS for the uh, a rundown project. I want to, we want to write some unit tests for, come on, give me my new issue template. Write some unit tests, that's not right, unit tests for RSS configuration builder. And, we'll, and I think that's what we'll do next time. Um, so there's that NuGet package. All right, how we doing, Glenn? We'll see if we can get this wired up real quick. And if if you're having a problem, I think I have. Do I have you on your Chris? No, I don't have Chris on my Skype. <clears throat> All right. IPX network. There's a throwback to days long, long gone by. Oh my gosh. Uh, what do we got over here? Look, Twitch stream is still pretty stable. I'm I'm thrilled with the performance of that, and and I'm all hardwired into the network here, right? There's no wireless going on at all. Let's see. I have no idea how to make non-business Skype add a contact. Um, would it be easier if we used... Uh, I don't want to use Skype for business. Um, I thought there was a way in Skype for business to say add somebody, add folks from the outside. The other... You can also use... Um, my Microsoft account connected is. Uh -huh. There we go. Aha. Uh -huh. Fantastic. All right, let's see if this works. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Apparently, he cannot type. All right. Let's give this a shot. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn off my webcam here. And I'm gonna go over to another one that I have set up called Code with Guest. All right, let's 
Let's see if this works. You know, you have to answer. Hey, there we go. How we doing? That's the wrong camera, but... It's still calling. Internet connection problem. No, you have to answer. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right. How are we doing? Cool. Camera, but... And I can change the text yeah. up here. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Everything all right? It's still showing. No, that's fine. Cool. That works. What should I put in for your for your guest name up here? Uh oh, you can't hear me. Right? I think aren't you Glenn C? What's what's your Twitter handle? Hey. There you go. Can you hear me now? I don't know. Whatever you like. I had to put these headphones on because I can't hear you through Skype, but I can hear you through uh through the stream. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Okay, you can't hear me through Skype, so let me look at the Uh Condren G is my Twitter handle. Condren G. All right, so there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Cool. So that kind of works, but I've still got this goofy internet connection problem going across me. That feels bad. There it goes. There it goes. Uh -huh, All right. There we go. Okay. Now I can hear you through Skype, and I can't hear the stream. Awesome. Fantastic. And now Fantastic. I should now be able to put be put the filters on here. Put the filters on here. Ooh, sounds fancy. This stream delay is amazing, by the way. I can see everything that happens if, you know, however many seconds after it happens. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, th that's planned that way. Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and now I can actually right. move me over now here. I can actually move me over here. Oh, that's neat. All right. Oh, All right. What do you think? What do you yeah. think? It, and it looks and it, like, like I've got good I've rendering got good and good rendering coming back from, coming you. Back from you. you. And you you can see my whole screen thing back there. Screen thing back there. Yeah, I can. Um, 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 stream looks seems fine. Yeah, I'd be okay with using Discord. Um, Sid, um, but either either is fine. Yeah, the challenge, yeah, the challenge and, is, and this is building this properly is too. Properly too. The, the challenge with Discord. The, the challenge with Discord. Um, I've been told the video told is the video sketchy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, I talked to a I couple of other podcasters, podcasters, and they were saying... Um, uh, they were saying Skype works, works really well for them. Really well for them. Yeah. Yeah, I think some of the some of the streamers I've watched that do, um, that do a lot of these kind of group things, um, they use Skype, but I know they use Skype because occasionally they forget to restart the call, and they do a Skype call that goes for about eight hours... Whilst they whilst they all play together, and about after about three or four hours, it just drops everybody, and then they have to restart the Skype call. So they have to remember to take a break every you know three hours and um, restart the call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We are getting some feedback. It sounds like my audio. It's probably my. It's probably my fault. I, I'm just I just turned on my laptop, my my notebook, my uh, service book too, and I'm just streaming through this, like talking to you through the speakers. So um, I would use headphones and you know, and stuff. Cool. In, in the cool. real world. Well, thanks for helping with the test. This this looks like it's going to work great. And um, if you're available in the next few weeks, I'd love to get on here and talk about the Docker tooling with you. I am I am totally on a December staycation, so um, we'll talk about so I'll January be for the next month. And I can either be I can I'm happy to do that for you though from home. It seems cool. Fun. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll set something up then. Yeah, sounds good, man. All right. Thanks a lot, Glenn. Thanks. Yep. Catch you later. See you guys. All right. All right. And that, and now I can change back to this. There I am. Fantastic. That was great. I'm, I'm thrilled that worked. I think we're going to set up and start pushing some interviews through here, I think. Um, what, do you, what do you think of the chat room? Um, if we set up and do interviews in that model, looks like it's going to work great. I, I know Discord has... Um, I know Discord has video chat, but I think Skype is going to work great. 
being able to hang up, switch back, and see the end of the call is kind of strange. <laughs> it is, yeah. So, looks like I need to do a little tuning of my Skype settings on my side. But you guys on the chat, you were able to hear Glenn, no problem. It sounds like, it looked like Chris was saying that he was getting, um, getting the audio on Glenn's side coming through. So that's, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm thrilled this is working. Um, but I, I think that's where we want to end up here today. I've got, so I've got a couple, I've got a couple of folks you may have seen me talk to on, um, on Twitter that I'm interested in having come out and help us do a couple of interviews. Um, my friend Mike, who works on the Angular CLI team, he's out in Pittsburgh. Um, I've asked him to help us and maybe we can clean up some of this JavaScript and make it Angular here. Excuse me. Um, I've got some other folks. Um, Iris Klassen may talk to her about doing a little bit of Azure work. We'll talk to Glenn in the next week or two about how we want to position and how to how to save this stuff into Docker directly from Visual Studio, build it a little bit easier. And um, I like talking about putting that stuff into an, an Azure repository so that I can download and use it no matter which machine I'm on here. So let me create that as an issue here because I want to make sure that I come back to that. Uh, load the rundown application into a private Docker repository on Azure. And we'll do our first little bit of Azure work as well. Um, so thanks so much, everybody, from, for joining in. Uh, Glenn was using an open desktop mic when it caught and returned the sound. Yep, headphones would definitely have helped, and, and I think we've got that. Uh, we've got that covered for future. Um, there was no feedback. Yep. Uh, so I think, I think we're in good shape. We've got a couple of good things that we want to do here. I'm going to edit um, the contents here of this live stream. Oh, look. Some uh, question here from Chris. That's great. Throw your questions in here on Fritz live stream, and we'll make sure we get to those items. Um, and uh, that's my wife texting me saying, don't forget to eat lunch. <laughs> um, but Saturday morning, we'll get back together at 10 a.m., and I'll start running down some of these things. We'll get through them. Later on today, look for the uh, video to be over on YouTube. And we'll have a wrap-up blog post with links to the new version of the NuGet package. You can try out that RSS configuration builder. And um, we'll take a look at running down some of these items on Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. It's been a lot of fun. We'll see you then.